Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well, all right, folks. How's it going? How's everybody doing? It's been a while. Um, didn't have an episode last week, as I had mentioned last week. Uh, we had family visiting from out of town, out of state, not out of this world, although um, sometimes those visits from uh, family can feel like it's, you know, out of this world, man. But no, it was, a, it was a, my wife's family, um, my, her father's uh, sister and husband, so, you know, aunt and uncle. Um, they live on the West Coast, and... Uh, you know, they're up in years and they don't come out here, but about once a year. And with some of the, uh, you know, pandemic restrictions and stuff from the last year or two, they haven't, they haven't made it out here. So um, it's been a couple of years since we all got to see them. <clears throat> and we wanted to use the time that we had uh, spending with them, you know, to be put to good use. So um, I had, I had plans of, you know, having a podcast last week, but that changed as you can tell. So actually, let me do something real quick. Did I do that? Yeah, I did. All right. So this week's uh, episode is just kind of going to be a, a recap of the one before. Um, and I was able to figure out, I remember last time we had uh, an episode, we had a call that I wanted to listen to from uh, Crow, he's a Govi out in Idaho. Crow in Idaho, he's uh, their tribe, I believe, are called the Deathlanders because if you ever been to Idaho, those are the Deathlands. Um, pretty cool guy from what I've gotten a chance to to listen to um, from him. So he uh, he had some comments about the topic of last week's podcast or the last podcast, I should say, about you know even self care and stuff like that. So we're going to be listening uh, to his voicemail, you know, and as a reminder, the phone lines are always open, although I don't answer them live, you can always call in and leave a message, leave a message after the beep, beep, so we're going to be listening to that, and it's going to kind of be recapping a bit the, uh, the Seeger Bloat uh, event that uh, my tribe and I uh, participated in a small group gathering, nothing too elaborate, um, but it was good times. Um, I've shared a little bit of of, uh, of content about that. Um, so if you guys go to the YouTube channel, if you're watching this on Spotify or listening to this on any other podcast platform, head over to the Midgard Musings YouTube channel and you'll see a, uh, a Freyer Wicker Man. We call the Freyer Man. It's uh, it's our it's our tradition. It's become a tradition for us at Sigurblot uh, to make a wicker man um, and dedicate it to Freyr. We, we will gather limbs from the nearby, you know, deadfall of, of trees, um, bind it up, you know, with, with uh, baling twine or with, uh, 
yeah, baling twine usually works really well. Um, we got some straw, so all of the all of the uh, material used to to kind of make him what he is, you know, assembled as like a, a full figured body, um, where the branches and limbs and and, and straw that uh, that made him. And then we always include for anybody that's not familiar with one of Freyer's um, infamous features, he is he is. Um, we, 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 we dedicate our, our, our wicker man to Frere in, in all his phallic glory. Um, so if you guys go to the YouTube channel and watch um, the burning of the wicker man, of the Frere man, right, um, you'll notice that he has a, um, a phallic appendage made out of another branch. You know, so we always do that. We, we did it on the, the first year's uh, wicker man that we made, and he, 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 it was a bit crude. We had, I think it was hedge apples, um, somehow tied into the, into the frame to kind of replicate the, uh, the Kuyans, right. <laughs> the gonads. <laughs> um, but this year we, uh, we didn't have any hedge apples. It's, it, it's really weird. Um, the hedge apples hadn't fallen yet. Um, whereas a couple of years ago, they had fallen aplenty. They were all over the place. Um, so this time we just had the, you know, the shaft <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, that's our thing. So, um, head over to the YouTube channel to check that out and uh, see what it is. It's all about. It was it was it was a great time. We did that. You know, um, Dingo's daughter, Dingo being our Gothi, you know, um, we we collectively him and I um, worked together on writing the ritual, you know, the words that we would speak for the ritual. Um, and, you know, and the plan was um that either he or i was was going to to speak but his daughter kaya had asked if she could read some of the and then it turned into could she read the whole thing and i said of course that would be great so i didn't record any of that and there's not going to ever be any recordings of us actually conducting ritual you know what i'm saying like the closest thing that I, that, you know, we, we did the, the Freyer, uh, the Freyer man burning right before ritual. That was kind of the, the launch into the ritual as it were. And, uh, but I won't ever like, I won't ever be the one to record any of our rituals. Um, just be just out of respect, you know, um, I feel like that's kind of one of those things that needs to be kept private to the attendees. Um, our, our, our height, our high feasts, our, our, our holy tides that, that our tribe adheres to um, are closed off to the tribe. Um, with the exception of Yule, we, we, we invite guests and friends and near dear friends to the tribe to participate. So, you know, at our Yule, we will invite um, either neighboring members of, of you know, tri members of neighboring tribes. For instance, we have um, Greg, Greg Strong, who is chieftain of the Raven Moon Hearth in Nashville. We've had him um, at every one of our Yule events. Uh, but the Sigur Bloat thing, it's, it's for victory, right? And so we, we, uh, we, we keep that one closed off to, to, to tribe only. But so I won't ever like record anything like that and, and share it on the internet. But uh, so you'll get as much as you get from seeing the Frere Wicker Man being burnt. Um, so Kaya, you know, read the, the ritual, um, and it was really sweet because, you know, it's all handwritten. So she's, I think, six years old now. Um, and she was reading, you know, in the dark, the only thing that was illuminating, I think Dingo maybe had a flashlight, but mainly the light of the fire that the burning of the, the wicker man provided. So, you know, that whole thing went up in flames and it was very illuminating, um, and, you know, she's six and, and she's reading the handwriting of men in their late 30s and uh, several pages, actually. You know, so it was a it was a slower process, like the ritual reading um, lasted longer than it would have had, you know, Dingo or myself been reading it. Um, but that was that was the great thing about it is because the time that it took for her to read through it, she did it very, very well. I mean, I'm, I've, got, I've got to say, you know, for, for being six and reading a whole, you know, multiple page uh, ritual like that, that's impressive. 
Um, but I wanted, I wanted her that I wanted to allow that opportunity for her, especially seeing as, you know, she asked for it um, and asked to do it. I thought that I was a tremendous, that would, that'd be a tremendous gesture to um, celebrate, right? First of all, and uh, have something so, so strong added to the well and become part of our tribal luck. Um, so because it lasted a bit longer, because, you know, you, you, you kind of call our cause to pause and think about everything that's being said, because even though you spent the time writing it, right, even though Dingo and I spent the time penning it down, you know, from pen, you know, from the mind to the pen to the paper, um, listening to it being recited and, and having everything being said, you know, she struggled with a couple of words. So there was a community effort, you know, the tribe involved, got involved to help. And what does that word say? It says this, you know that sort of thing. Um, so even though she read it, it, it became a kind of tribal affair. You know, we were all there for it, but it was very much a hands-on thing. And, you know, you get to really um, put your focus on what's being said when it's being said, um, because you're not the one saying it. So I don't know, like it worked out, worked out really well. And um, I did want to make sure to, to, to tell that, you know, here on this podcast, because I know that not just our tribe, but a lot of other groups um, leading up to today and from, you know, a couple of weeks ago have been, uh, a lot of groups have been observing um, a celebration of equivalence to Seeger Bloat. You know, I know that um, Eric's, uh, Eric Shervin's people in Texas, the uh, Ridgar folk, uh, they, they have a Lifga uh, celebration uh, right around that time or the week after we did our Seeger Bloat. Um, and they have a really neat, um, dedication. I think their, their, you know, springtime celebration is dedicated to Idun. <clears throat> From my understanding, um, you can probably go back through Eric's catalog, um, in his, in his YouTube videos and find something. I think he did, he did a video or two where he, you know, he talks about leaf guy and, and, and what that is. And, and I know that him and I both did a collaboration video talking about Ostar or Estor, um, which is another um, commonly referred to. And, and, and this is, you know, this, this, this could be a whole conversation. Goddess slash moon slash month, right? Um, deity, whatever, uh, around the same time of year. So we did like this collaboration video and there's a lot of you know, um, stuff from that video that I probably would go back to and go, mm, needed a little, need to polish that one up a bit. Uh, but anywho, uh, between him and I and the content that he's put out and I've put out, you know, we've talked about those springtime celebrations. Um, so, you know, his tribe, uh, they celebrate uh, Lifka. Um, our tribe, clearly the folk, celebrate Seagerbloat. And then I've seen some other uh, groups of people um, or people that represent other groups talking about celebrating Seagerbloat. Um, even as recent as this past weekend, you know, so there are a couple of weeks, um, you know, or at least a full week, um, week and a half, whatever, uh, past the um, official date, right? The, the, the actual date of the moon, the full moon. Uh, but that's fine, you know, whatever works and then whatever works for you. And I see a lot of people um, when they talk about their ritual or ask about what they should do, um, they get nervous. And, you know, there's, there's, there's concern, like, oh, I'm not going to read it right. Or I've never done this before. Um, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to stumble over my words. I'm afraid I'm going to, you know, botch this whole thing. Um, and, and then I get to sit back and reply and say, hey, our tribe, uh, our ritual was led by a six-year-old. <laughs> and it was great. You know, was it like the most, like, would you say, like, it's the most eloquent, the most elaborate, the most, you know, aesthetic? perfect you know whatever like no there was a, you know it was, it was rough around the edges but in that roughness and in that imperfection um it was perfect and it was it was great for us so because it was so genuine because it was so sincere and because it was something that came from the heart and, and was done in that way and in that fashion right so i always can go back to that moment that i was a part of and that our tribe celebrated together and can say, you know, look, don't, don't be so hung up on the, uh, 
on the, on the specifics of it, you know, don't be worried about messing up, right? As it were, don't be worried about falling short, missing a word, mispronouncing a word. I mean, if a six-year-old can, can do it, um, and it, and it work well, then surely you can as well. Um, and just let it come from the heart and let it be genuine and let it, uh, be the thing that secures luck for your kindred, your tribe, your, your group. Um, so for everybody and anybody who got the chance to celebrate whatever, Ostara, Astor, the Siegerblot, Lifka, whatever you call it, whatever your springtime uh, celebrations are for the purpose of uh, whatever they are, um, I hope that all of your celebrations have um, brought with, with them um, you know, good results and that you've achieved the desired results and that you receive good luck. Uh, for the rest of the year, into the times of bounty, into the times of plenty. You know, we look ahead now into doing things and into it, in, into achieving things uh, to set ourselves up for the next cycle. Um, we we've survived the harshness, we've survived the darkness, we've survived the time of leanness. You know, and now we look forward to times of plenty and bounty and celebrating those victories, winning those victories, achieving those victories, setting out and doing those things. Um, you know, lots of, well, that's one of the things that, you know, <clears throat> we tried to incorporate into our cigar boat is, you know, everybody here should have a victory that they, that they um, can celebrate or should celebrate. And let's talk about that. Let's speak it into existence. Let's make it so. Right. Let's uh, and let's celebrate in those victories together, because one man's victory, one woman's victory, one person's victory amongst the tribe is the tribe's victory and can potentially have benefit for the tribe as a whole. Um, and, you know, your joy is our joy. Your sorrow is our sorrow, that whole thing. Um, and that's what I love, 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 love about the, 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 the tribal approach to heathenry. It, it just fits so well with you know the very um inherent worldviews um and and that sort of thing so hopefully you got a chance to celebrate sigurblot with your with your kin and your kith your extensions of family um and even if you didn't even if you celebrated it solitarily i know we've got some people that are listening and watching that um have no real grassroots kindred or tribe or anything like that similar close to them or that they're not a part of it yet or that they're looking for something right and, and but yet you still find ways to practice solitarily um and you're a solitary practitioner and you do things by yourself or in in the the confines and in the privacy of your home or whatever sacred space that you've set up or deemed uh, appropriate and so for you as well for all of our solitary uh practitioners and i wish uh, uh you know lots of luck and good victories for you as well um, and that kind of is, is a good i think segue uh into crow's um call so i'm going to pull that up real quick and i want us to listen to what he has to say so crow once again is in idaho um and this is him calling in in reference referencing the last podcast episode about you know self care. So let's see what he ha let's see what he has to say. Hi Jesse, this is Crow once again from the Deathlands. Um, I really liked your your last episode about heathen self care. Um, a couple of things I thought would be great to attribute to it, you know, for all of us, is uh, to embrace solitude. Um, it, don't get you know, overwhelmed by it, yes, by any means. But like, like listen, like go out into the forest or the desert or the mountains or wherever you are. And mm -hmm. Just take time to well, listen to yourself. Listen to what's going on inside. Uh, assess it, digest it, and just let it out. Kind of like how uh, smoke is to fire. Mm. You burn it and it's gone. Um, also, to uh, keep an open mind, uh, a lot of people I don't think really 
take time to embrace it. Um, man, there's just there's a lot of things that can be taken care of with an open mind, like accepting things, like I said before, as they are, mm-hmm. or at least you know, taking the time to look at them and be like, oh, well, if I assess it this way, I can overcome it. Um, the last two things I think are really kind of pertinent because that's how uh, my wife and I view things is to uh, breathe new air and find new dirt. Now, I'm not talking about going like uh, across the country or anything, you know. I mean, who has the money for that, with, especially with gas prices as they are now? Oh, my God. But, yeah. you know, I mean, go out. Go to a different forest. Mm. Breathe this air. Or go out to a different mountain and get your boots in this dirt. So when you come home, you can look over, look over at your boots and make, oh, wow, that, that's a memory right there. And it's their milestone. And I think that's most important for um, healthcare, especially when it comes to us heathens. We're very uh, nature-based, mm. and I feel it ties into it. Anyways, have a good day. And uh, hello, Odin. And drink lots of water. Drink lots of water. Yes. You know, he brings up some, some, you know, several good points. And again, in light of the attention on health, you know, uh, self-care, taking care of ourselves, um, keeping an an open mind, uh, he's talking about, you know, um, being, being open to the, to those ideas and, and not, we talked about, um, embracing the solitude. That was the word I was looking for embracing embracing that solitude you know um there's a place for that there's definitely a place for it even in um tribal heathenry you know um obviously the tribe ideally doesn't uh doesn't function as good um without each respective member having a part in what in 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 the tribe's mechanics right and then the way it works it's the engines has to all the pistons have to be firing on all cylinders and everything has to be, you know, everybody has a place and everybody has a part, but the solid, the solitude, the solid dude, (laughs) the, you know, solitary practitioners and solitude, there's a place for that. I find myself uh, finding comfort and solace uh, in solitude a lot. And, you know, you can, you can look at it too, from like the perspective of um, the gods that we venerate, you know, Odin is the chieftain of the Aesir. You know, he is their leader. He is their king. He is over that tribe. Um, and, and he has many stories of, of being alone and, and wandering by himself and not having a companion, not having anyone to go with. And there's probably some uh, inherent value to, to why that is, right? Um, but especially when you consider just you need a break from people sometimes. Sometimes you just need to, to get out and get away. Um, recently, myself, right? I, I, had, I had that happen. Um, never fails. My phone rings whenever I'm in the middle of doing something. And this phone call um, is, you know, way after my, my work hours. So never fails, though. I, I said that the last time. It never fails. Anyway, um, it's not important right now. When, uh, when, as I say, this last week, um, or just this past weekend, rather, you know, um, there was a gathering of, 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 of pagans. Actually, one of, I mentioned Greg earlier from Raven Moonhearth. He, he, he held a, a Beltane uh, group, or a Beltane get-together. It was a, it was a Beltane celebration, you know, a little early, I guess. But um, it, was, it was a beautiful day, um, and it was here in one of our local parks in, in, in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And... Uh, I, I, I couldn't attend, um, but one of our one of our members of our tribe did. So there was, you know, there was representation uh, there, which was great. But I was I was doing my own thing, right? I, I I went out to one of my favorite spots, one of my favorite um, locations off of the the Greenway hiking trails and stuff, right? It wasn't a very long uh, distance for me to go, 
Um, but it was a solitary thing. Um, and I had a purpose in it. You know, I, I wanted to meditate. I wanted to, to be alone. I wanted to kind of uh, separate myself from the, the world around me and, and, and be alone for a bit. And that's okay. That's actually part of taking care of yourself, right? Don't be, don't be, don't, don't feel bad. And like Crow says, you know, embrace the solitude. It's, it's, it's okay to step, step aside or, or step outside, you know, and go clear your mind and, and, and find that, like he was talking about, find that new air, you know, breathe in new air and, and, and feel new earth. Um, granted, you know, this is very, um, I know this earth, right? I, I know the places that I went. So it wasn't like I was going to a new place, but the experience can be, can be new, especially as you go into it in a specific state of mind, you know, uh, if you want to, um, you know, get into like a ritual state of mind or whatever, and, and, and kind of zone out a little bit and, and focusing on where you are physically to, to be able to travel or go other places. So going into the woo woo type stuff, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, it's beneficial. It's beneficial to um, step outside of where you feel like, you know, you're, you're, you're with your community, you're with your tribe, you're with your people. Uh, sometimes you just need to step away. Sometimes being around all that uh, can get overwhelming or you, you just, you know, you need to clear your mind, clear, clear it all. So it's very beneficial and it works great. So like he's saying, you know, embrace the solitude, but don't get lost in it. Don't go. Um, <laughs> I can't, I'll never forget. Um, I, I, I've, I've made reference to enough times, I think on, on this podcast, uh, for people that are return listeners, um, about my ritual, uh, journey in November that I went on with, um, my tribesmen, you know, and that was a shamanic journey. Um, 100% shamanic, um, that it was a healing ritual it was it was a bunch of things um, but it was very shamanic and one of the one of the key things that I remember about that whole experience was at, at some point I wandered off I left the circle I left the I left the sanctity or the or the or the the safety right the sanctuary not the sanctity I left the sanctuary of my tribe right of the, of those who I was there with, I, I, I wandered outside of it and I needed to, I needed to go and do my own thing. And I did. And then I temporarily got lost, not lost in the sense of, I didn't know where I was, um, but just lost in the sense of, I can see where I need to go, but I don't know how to get there. Like the mechanics of it, like getting from point A to point B just was not happening. You know, I could see the end of the tunnel, but I couldn't put my feet in front of each other to get to that point. Right. And I needed help getting back. I needed help from my Godi. And um, the advice that I received was, you know, it, it was, it's something that I'll never forget. And it's something that I've, that I'm, that I'm taking with me on many, uh, at facets of, of my life, you know, and what he said to me was, it's okay to get lost a little bit. It's okay to go out there, but just don't go so far out that you, that you forget your way back. Um, so it, 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 it's kind of a reminder to me, like what, you know, Crow is saying is it's, you know, embrace the solitude. Just don't, don't get crazy with it, you know, cause you can, you can get lost in that and it can become, something so healing and something so beneficial and something so good can turn into something that ruins us. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, you gotta be careful. Don't, don't get so lost and it. Don't feel that you're so cut off or that you're so, you know, just because you're, uh, not a member of a tribe or you don't have, you know, a kindred or a group or whatever you want to call it, um, of people that you can associate with, um, or, or that you think you can associate with, uh, doesn't mean that you have to stay, a hermit and isolated to the point where you have no interaction because you can just become too definitely agree with that you know whenever you have the opportunity go to new places it doesn't have to be far it doesn't have to be you know like he's talking about with traveling and stuff it's it, it is it's a 
it's definitely a hard time. There's a lot of challenges uh, that we, as humans, as, as humanity, you know, we have a lot of challenges that, that face us, um, but we persevere and we, we figure out, um, you know, what we have to do to, to make things happen. And, and that's the other, you know, um, beautiful thing about tribe is that because when you have more people um, in your corner, when you have more people at your side, then there's, there's more opportunities to, um, to meet those challenges and be victorious, right? Because one person by themselves faced with so many challenges um, is, is less equipped to, to beat them and to overcome them. Um, one example, you know, I, that I can think of, right, is, you know, our, our tribe events are, are very collaborative with, with each other, right? No one man does too much, um, but everybody has a role. I say man, but I mean, like, no one person does too much. When we get together and we have our tribal events, you know, we're usually preparing food as well. And that in itself is, is ritualistic, right? Because, we're in the kitchen um, and everybody has a role, right? Somebody's gonna prep vegetables, somebody's gonna prep the meat, somebody's gonna fire up the grill, somebody's gonna cook the bread in the oven, somebody's gonna, you know, whatever, the stew, you know, everybody's gonna have their hand in the, in the pot to stir the stew and make sure that it doesn't burn or it doesn't boil over or whatever. You know, if it was just one person doing all that, they'd be overwhelmed, you know? You'd burn the this, you'd, you'd overcook that, You'd set something on fire, right? Whatever. Um, and, and also to the point of the ritual space when we're, when we're at our vey, you know, no one person is, is cutting all the wood. You know, no one person is constructing the wicker man. We all had our hands on them, you know. Some of us had our hands on places of, of, of frayer for good luck. I mean, you know, it's like, you can't help, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's there. And you gotta, you gotta give them, give them an old, give them a little tug. You know what I mean? For good luck, for good luck and good measure. <laughs> Not to get too graphic, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, gotta keep fair happy. So um, it's, it's, it's stuff like that. You know, everybody has their hands in it and everybody has their, uh, their part. Um, and again, it's just the beautiful thing about the tribe. You don't get overwhelmed. Uh, with with so much because you are helping each other and everybody has their own thing even to the point of uh, outside of that you know getting from point a to point b you know i'm in a i'm in a position right now where my car is is not roadworthy i need to get a lot of work done on it not even a lot of work but i need to get work done on it that's going to cost this right so when i need to get places or when i need to you know be able to get to the ritual place, you know, and, and my wife can't take me there or whatever. It's, you know, Dingo and Patrick, they're always, we'll make it happen, you know, and I compensate for that. You know, it's, you know, here's some gas money. Let me, let me buy the, the meal. Let me do this. Let me do that. It's all about the, the continuous preservation of luck. And it's a gifting exchange. It's a gifting cycle. That's how we do it. That's how we preserve luck. And, and it's one of the ways I should say that, that, that we do it is we, keep that gifting cycle going. We keep that, we keep those wheels rolling, you know? So if, you know, we, we get together and, and it's, you know, we're going to have dinner or stuff, we all contribute or we bring something to drink, you know, it's, it's, I mean, we are, we are literally folks. So, you know, there's always some good, strong whiskey going around um, of different stories. I don't think we've ever had the same whiskey more than twice in a year at, a, at, at an event, you know, it's always usually something different. Um, might have a staple that we keep around, but it's like always something new. We all contribute to that, right? So solitude, you know, and, and solitary practitioners, you don't get that um, same experience. And that can, that can be uh you know, that can put a lot of people into a mental funk. I get it, you know, especially when you see things being shared and it's like, man, I want to be a part of that. I want to do that, you know, and you can, you absolutely can. Like, for, you know, with, with, um, with, with Greg's, um, with Greg's event this past weekend, um, the, the Beltane thing, you know, it was an open event, pagans, heathens, 
atheist. I mean, anybody really, I mean, obviously Beltane, it's, it's, you know, a pagan observance of, uh, but in, in that way, but I mean, it's, it's open to anybody, you know, all ages. And I can almost say for sure that in, in most places, I mean, I'll speak to the United States. I don't, cause I can't really speak to what's going on outside of the domestic U S but I think in, in the majority of places in the United States, that anybody that wants to organize an event similar to that, if they want to put a, a, a public event on Facebook, you can do it. And I, you would be surprised that just the, the, if you don't have somebody that you're, uh, you know, a group or, or um, a kindred or whatever, if there's not people that you are already connected with, create an event like that where you're like, hey, if you're pagan or pagan friendly, uh, come on out and meet. Guarantee you, you're going to get people to show up. I would almost put money on it. I would put money on it, actually. No matter where you are, sometimes it's just taking that step. If if nobody else is doing it, then you be the one that does it, right? And and I and I got that um, that I got that spark and that idea <clears throat> thanks to Eric Shervin. You know, um, I watched one of his videos years ago, and he was talking about you know um, pagan events or or heathen events and meetups and how important it is to establish tribe and how important it is to you know, um, have, have a local community and, and, and all that and the importance of, of, of tribal heathenry. And I, and I really sunk my teeth into it and, and, and started learning about things and realized that, wow, yeah, there's a lot of different pagan groups around here. And there's even, you know, the Raven Moon Hearth Kindred has been around for a while and they are definitely Germanic pagan, um, but a little bit too eclectic, right. For my particular style. Um, at large, great people. And I said, Greg's a very good friend of mine, an honored guest at our hall for, uh, for our Yule events. And, 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 you know, nothing bad to say about the guy like that. I, uh, I just, you know, as far as being a part of a, 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 another extension of families, that, that, that wasn't where I was wanting to go with it. So what did we do? We, we started something of our own. And in the middle Tennessee area, there's a lot of other I think pagan, you know, subgroups and, and, and things. It's, it's very, for being in the Bible Belt, I got to say, <laughs> for being so, you know, Christian focused here, there's, there's actually a lot of uh, alternative religion. Um, I actually live down the road from a, uh, I believe it's a Buddhist uh, temple. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of alternative religions, not just your, you know, regular Christianity. Uh, sort of thing so for being in the south like there's a lot of those types of things and uh but we, we we have our middle tennessee heathens group and there's a you know it's not very large it's you know a few hundred members and it's kind of quiet nowadays um but that's a start it's it's a start for something and our tribe exists and, and as small as it may be it exists and it can with the right care with the right focus it'll grow and then that's kind of where we are at you know, we're in that young, early growth stage where you got to kind of be careful with the growth. You don't want to grow too fast and, and not have a good, strong foundation, right? You don't want to um, stay root bound for too long either, but there's, there's, there's movement. There's definitely movement and there's, you know, there will be more, there'll be definitely more. So what I'm saying is, is that it can happen. Um, some people actually prefer to be solitary. They prefer to be on the outskirts and, and not be a part of a group or whatever. And hey, if that's your if that's the way you like the mambo, then 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 by all means keep on dancing, right? Um, but for those that may feel a bit discouraged or a bit wanting of things, um, it's it's possible. Like you can do it. You, you know anybody can. If if there's nothing in the area that you know of and people aren't doing it already you can be the one to start it and you don't always have to be the one that is stuck in that solitary rut. Um, you can find community, you can build community, you can, you can start something yourself. Right. And we even talked about not, not in, in great detail, but on, um, in the last couple of episodes, uh, Emmanuel Frere is, you know, talking about making some big steps to have a kind of a, a, a a community, a literal community built on, on property that he's uh, going to be purchasing or plans to purchase and, and, and have, you know, community resources 
for heathens, you know, schools and, and, and markets maybe, or, or whatever. I don't know. I can't, I don't want to put ideas where they aren't any, but it's, you know, having all that, having a temple, a hof, a place of worship, that sort of thing. Very ambitious. Um, and, and, and really great to hear and, and great to see. Um, so it can be done, you know, to whatever degree your resources allow you to, to do that, um, then by all means do it, right? Don't, uh, sometimes waiting for something else to happen um, or for somebody else to do it uh, is going to leave you waiting for a very long time and you may never get the results. It may, just may never happen. You may be waiting for nothing. So I definitely appreciate you, Crow, uh, for, for calling in um, and, and, and leaving that really good advice. Um, I love the idea of, you know, going outside of the places that, you know, breathing in new, new air, you know, um, we're doing that. Our tribe is doing that later this year. We have plans of going out to North Carolina and uh, meeting up with J.M. Olufsen. And uh, if you all have a tier workshop, you guys have heard me talk plenty about, about him. Really great guy. Um, and that's going to be new new air, new earth for our tribe too. Um, I have it, I have been there before, but it's, it's, it's definitely not the norm for me around here. Obviously I don't see him that often. So it's going to be very refreshing and it's going to be new for the rest of the tribe. Right. So we're, we're going out there with a purpose, um, a definite purpose, a specific purpose, but the very journey itself, the very, essence of of going there is is part of the part of the purpose too it's it's journeying together literally um for another journey and breathing in that that new air feeling that new earth you know connecting with connecting with your you know the earth mother connecting with your um in that way um opens up a whole different perspective on things i think it, it's you know being like crow says you know very nature centric um and and uh i don't know just reconnecting in that way it's charging man like it's it's so electrifying <laughs> and uh it could be you know that um i i i feel more of that from recent experiences from my recent shamanic journeys and, and all that. But I, th I think it's heightened because of that, but I've always felt it. I've always felt better when I'm in nature and when I'm away from, you know, like I remember being a kid um, and growing up, I was always wanting to go outside and play, you know, um, and when, when I moved with my family uh, to a place where we had, you know, wooded property, my dad had at the time nearly 17 acres, you know, that's where, that's all where I wanted to be. You know, when I wasn't in school or when I wasn't working, I didn't want to go inside and watch TV. I didn't want to go inside and play video games. I didn't want to go to the mall and I wanted to be in the woods. And I'm talking like, I'll be back when it's dark kind of, kind of thing. Like I didn't just go out there, sit down, you know. I went in the woods, like I went walking, I went, I went exploring, I went places and I saw things and experienced the life around me and I, and it, and it felt like home. It just, it felt like that's where I wanted to be. You know, the lifestyle that I grew up in, um, was very, uh, dated, I guess you could say. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I grew up not on a farm, but I worked on a farm several days a week. So, you know, in that way, I did grow up working on a farm for like a decade from like the time I was like 10 or 11 years old until I moved away and moved to Tennessee. You know, I worked on a farm. I cut, uh, you know, firewood with, you know, I was, I was operating chainsaws. I was, I was operating splitters and, and, you know, splitting wood by hand with axes and mauls and, and wedges and sledgehammers and, you know, cut, cutting and baling hay in the, in the summertime and repairing fences and just being outdoors literally more than I was indoors. My job was outdoors for a lot of the time, you know? So I was, when I, when I, when I tell you like, you know, I, I moved to Tennessee and I, I found a different life and I, and I started finding a different career and 
you know, navigating through my youth and into my young adult years, um, you know, the concept of, you know, sitting inside or, or have, you know, climate controlled jobs and, and all of the modern conveniences, I was like, whoa, there's this now, you know, and I've become like pretty used to that. Like, that's great. I like it. I, li I like not having to, you know, kill myself basically to, to earn a paycheck. But, you know, some days like the other day, it was, you know, just, I need to get out. I need to go. I need to be, I need to sit on the earth. I need to breathe in the fresh air. I need to feel the sun on my skin, my eyes. I need to take all that in, you know, and I need to be recharged. And it did. Like it's, it's great. So you can do that anywhere, man. You can get, you can get no matter what, even if you're in a city, you know, there, there's parks, there's, you know, granted you're going to have a lot of other, it's, it's very busy, you know, like there's a lot of stuff, even here where I, where I usually go, right. As nice of a day as it was for, for me to be out. So is everybody else, you know? So, you know, you, you encounter uh, unexpected company sometimes when you go into places that are available to the public, we even talked about that a few podcasts ago about, you know, having ritual in, in public areas where there's the possibility of being interrupted, whether by accident or on purpose, there's, there's always that, uh, there's always that chance. Um, and then, you know, like there's a highway not too far from where I was sitting. So, you know, you got that noise pollution, but it, again, you do the best you can, you, you, you get what you can get out of it from, from wherever you are. So what I'm saying is, is there's really no, you know, there's a will, there's a way. If you want to, then you make it. You make it happen. You'll 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 find a way. Um, you find a way, or you make a way. So, but yeah, um, the last thing that I did want to bring to everyone's attention is uh, tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, for those that are watching this on the on on YouTube, so for like you channel members that are catching this early. Um, thank you very much, by the way. Thank you for the channel members that are uh, supporting the podcast in this way by uh, monetarily donating each month to get early access to these podcasts. And if you guys are interested in supporting the channel that way, like I said, I got car repairs I need uh, to get done. If you want to see the podcast a couple of days, uh, actually a few days before that they're uh, before they're normally aired, there's going to be links in the show notes and, and stuff on on how to on how you can do that. But anyway, tomorrow, Friday, the 29th, April 29th, I will be for the very first time ever <laughs> live streaming and gaming at the same time, right? Now that's a thing. That's a big thing. I know there's a lot of gamer, gamer streamers, gamer streamers. Um, and I'm not one of them, but I'm going to try something new. I'm going to be playing uh, Plague Inc. Um, so join me on Friday night. It, I think I think I'm going to start the stream at like 7:30 Central Time, so that'll be 8:30 Eastern, 5:30 Pacific. Um, on the YouTube channel, I'm going to be live streaming uh, and playing the Plague Inc. We're going to try to we're going to, we're going to try to wipe out humanity with a virus. Sound familiar? Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's not a very it's a, it's a pretty common game. I know a lot of folks I, I've engaged in the interest over the last couple of weeks or whatever. Um, and people are like, yeah, I remember that game. Oh, I still play it uh, occasionally. It's been a while since I've played it, but I thought, man, what, what, what a cool thing to do, you know? So we're going to stream, we're going to game. If you guys want to help the channel and help me in any way, um, pay for my costs on the card, you guys can donate to the channel. It, it's it's going to be a fun time. We're going to be talking about, you know, you're going to see me playing this game, but we're going to be talking about pagan stuff too, heathen stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and I hope that uh, you'll join me. So be sure to if you are not yet uh, subscribed to the YouTube channel that you are and that you have all of your notifications turned on, not just the YouTube notifications, but all your device notifications. So if you mainly, you know, absorb this podcast and everything else on your mobile device, uh, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and then make sure your device notifications are turned on because you don't want to miss it. And I'd like to get a nice you know, audience and in, in on this and see how much fun we can actually have. And I hope to make these a regular thing. I don't know if they're going to be yet a weekly 
uh, thing or monthly thing, probably leaning more towards a monthly thing or, or bi-monthly thing, you know, every couple of weeks, who knows, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what we've got going on and um, don't know how long the stream's going to last for. It might be an hour, it might be two hours. You never know. You just never know around here. Um, but the thing about it is, is it's historical because it's never happened on this channel. I've, I've, I've done plenty of, you know, you know, when I say this channel, I mean, for like the YouTube listeners and watchers, right? Like, Everybody that's listening on, on, on your podcast platforms, if you're not subscribed to Midgard Musings um, and you want to catch these video podcasts as well, please do so. Please subscribe, uh, check me out, and then join me on Friday night for the very first live stream gaming stream. <laughs> I, like I said, I've, I've streamed plenty of times before. I've, I've gone on marathon live streams where I've, you know, sat here and had chats with all you fine folks for hours. I think four or five hours may have been the, the longest live stream that I ever that I ever did. Um, but this is a first. So this is kind of historical. And I want you all to join me for it. So again, if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel, um, check the link tree link down in the description area or the show notes or you know, wherever you see the information for the podcast, wherever you see it, there's going to be a link tree link. All of my social media is going to be there. And follow me everywhere. Follow me on in Instagram, Twitter. Um, and Facebook. Um, I don't really post a lot to, I don't follow people on Instagram because my, my Instagram account is linked to the Facebook page and I don't do both. I just cross post from the Facebook platform. So if you guys are following me on Instagram, thank you so much, but please don't take offense if I don't follow you back because I don't use the app. Um, but anyway, follow me there. If you want to see some cool posts, I usually post, you know, a, a photo or a video or, or so every, every day or every couple of days, try to stay active on there as well. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me everywhere. Patreon, you can become a patron and help monetarily support uh, what I do. It helps the podcast. It helps everything uh, with the production. As you can see, you know, the, 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 the environment, the, the, the setup, everything is, is very different than uh, recent podcast episodes because this is, this is new and I wanted to do something that is a bit more unique. So hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, engage. Let me know in the comments section and uh, answer the polls. If you're watching this on, on the Spotify platform or listening to this, there'll be a poll or questions, you know, engage, 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 do it, do the thing and do all the things um, and help you boy out. So I do appreciate you all so very much. And thank you for tuning into today's podcast. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up, share it around. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you all again on Friday's gaming live stream wherein i try to destroy humanity with a virus or some sort of biological warfare so should be fun looking forward to it all right well that concludes today's podcast episode thank you again all of you all of my patrons all of my subscribers all of my viewers all of my listeners all of you thank you so very much until we talk again hail may the gods watch over you May your ancestors continue to walk with you.